Hey, deserving listeners, it's time to continue watching 90 Day Fiancé. My name is Dr. Kirk Honda. I'm a therapist and a professor. Let's see if anything of interest comes out of my face. So, did you sleep well, sweetie? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, can I ask you something? Yeah. Will you put the phone down? Um, you know, it's been 10 months since I saw you. I'm just kind of wondering, like, you know, why we didn't have sex last night. Oh, I guess you were a bit tired. I was a bit tired, so I was hoping I would get the first night to rest. Okay. I just want to point out that there's nothing wrong with anyone, regardless of gender, saying, yeah, I was a little tired, I wasn't in the mood. Nothing wrong with that. But the emotional content here is much more uh, pronounced than the actual sexual act, I'm guessing. That for Stephanie, I almost said the mom, <laughs> for Stephanie... She is probably worried, like, huh, he didn't have sex with me. Does he still like me? I'm guessing that's what she is wondering about, and maybe she can get to that. It wasn't so much about, I don't know, the sex, because I know you and I are still, like, recovering, you know, and we're in this new environment. We haven't seen each other in 10 months. But, I mean, even if you, <laughs> even if you banged me for two or three minutes, it's, a, it's about the bonding at this point. I mean, I wasn't expecting the big hour sessions that, you know, that... Okay, so she is wording it differently than I might have worded it, but she's getting to the, I think, the heart of the matter, which I was suspecting, which is it's about a connection, it's about intimacy, it's about showing each other that you love each other. And so she is now putting out a bid for do you love me? You know, it's not about the sex, it's about do you still love me? So let's see how he responds. Again, for the bonding, not for the big, mm. wasn't ex expecting a big magic show. Didn't you think about it? Because unless we're fighting, it's always been four times a night. Mm. So, I don't know. I feel there's something else. So, of course, she's going to jealousy and assumptions of, uh, I'm guessing she's intimating that you're not having sex with me because you're having sex with someone else. Now, I will say that they're either editing it this way or he is just not saying anything which is hard to figure out what's going on in his head. Maybe he'll say. There's know. nothing else. It's all, I'm all good. <laughs> okay. So it's hard to know because this scene seems to be pretty heavily edited, but at least what we're being shown is suspiciousness from him, not a lot of attention to her feelings. You know, what am I looking for? Well, I, what I would be thinking what could happen is he could say, oh, yeah, I've just been tired. I'm really sorry, or I'm still adjusting. And I just want you to know I still love you, and I want to have sex with you all the time. But last night, it was just a little bit of an anomaly, and I'm, I'm still in love with you. I'm still with you. I don't want you to worry. Um, I'm actually having some issues or whatever it is, you know, just a little bit of an explanation or some reassurance because I'm guessing that would help her. But he, at least the way they're editing it, he's just essentially saying nothing and not even looking at her. It's hard for me to believe if you haven't had sex in 10 months. Why don't you ask me and stop thinking and, and going through your own head? Yeah, so she's just completely going to... You must have been cheating on me. Now, maybe he has been. The way that these two talk to each other and the sort of things that they've admitted to, it wouldn't be surprising if he had been having sex with other people or even he has a full-on girlfriend or something. Who knows? I don't want to accuse him of anything. But the way that they talk to each other, uh, again, it just wouldn't surprise me. So she's not, you know, her, her worries aren't necessarily unfounded. But... But what are you going to do about it, right? It's, it's kind of a weird situation. I'm trying to think like what I would do if I were in her shoes. I guess what I would do if I were in her shoes, I wouldn't be in her shoes, <laughs> but if I was, I would say, um, okay, I guess I don't really know. And of course, if I just ask him, hey, have you been having sex with other people? He's going to say no, because that's usually what he says. So I don't know. So I guess I'm just going to have to have a big question mark on that one because on one hand, you could be lying to me. On the other hand, you could be telling the truth. I don't know.
but we haven't seen each other in 10 months. And so we're going to rebuild our trust and the clock starts now. And if in five years from now, I still love him and I still trust him or I, I've built trust, then at that point I can say that I want to be with him. But it's this rushing aspect of like, I need to figure out if we're going to get married now. I need to figure out if you've been cheating on me now. But there's just no way to know that. I mean, unless she hires private investigators, which maybe she did, actually, given the fact that she has that kind of cash on her. But aside from that, how would you know? You just don't know. None of us know. That's what I always say is none of us know if our spouses are cheating on us or not. Even if you're in eye contact with your spouse all the time, they could be emotionally cheating on you online because I mean, it's not usual to see every single thing that they're doing. So how do we trust people? Well, we build a relationship. We, it lasts over time there because there's a consistency of behavior. And this is why infidelity, of which this couple has had a lot of between the two of them, that's why infidelity throws all that off. How do I know that my wife isn't cheating on me right now? She, I can't see her. She could be cheating on me. Why do I know that she's not? Because it's never happened before. And there's been no indication of that. And I trust her and she's shown me that she loves me and we have a bond and I know she cares about our relationship. It's that, and why do I, how do I know those things? Because we've been together for a long time and we've said a lot of things and we've been through trials and tribulations and we've both passed the tests of, you know, we get to a Y in the road and we choose the relationship over some other path. This couple doesn't have that. So of course she doesn't trust him. So in her position, what's she, what is she supposed to do? Well, I, I think, uh, if again, if I were in her shoes, I would say, I think I want to be with this person, but we just haven't been together and there's been a lot of infidelity. And so I'm going to give it another five years and see if at, that, at the end of that time, if there's been no cheating and a lot of trust being built and a lot of love, then I'll want to spend the rest of my life with this person. But to rush it, I, I just don't think there's any way. I'm here. Ask me. How many women have you slept with since I've been gone 10 months? None. Of course, I'm horny as <laughs> Yes, I want to have sex. But I was just thinking about your well-being last time. That's it. Right. So she asked and he said, none. And how can she know for sure? Well, she can't because of infidelity in the past, apparently. So... You know, there's that. There is something actually interesting. Let me actually go down this road that she's been building up to having to tell him that she had sex with his cousin. And when we are ashamed of something, when there's something inside of us that we don't like about ourselves, we will project it onto other people. That's the meaning of projection is that there's something about ourselves that we hate that or we are afraid of or that we're denying. And we will as a way of coping with that, we will push it out onto other people and we will attack it in other people. But really we're attacking ourselves and we're tricking ourselves into thinking it's external when it's internal. There's a possibility that Stephanie is shaming herself and terrified of the fact that she actually had sex with his cousin. I don't know if they consider that infidelity. It sounded like they were broken up at the time or at least kind of, but let's call it an infidelity of sorts. And so she's shaming herself. She feels ashamed. She doesn't like that aspect of herself. She wish it had happened. But because she can't cope with that, because it's too painful to cope with the self as being that, she projects it out onto him. And he's a good target because he has cheated, apparently. And she concentrates on that. You'll see that in people. When people are cheating, sometimes, not always, they will accuse other people of cheating. Uh, an example of this that I found in my own life was when I was young and I was a passenger in a car, I wasn't afraid, no matter who was driving. I'd be in the car as a passenger and I'd, I just trusted. I trusted the driver. When I became a learning driver when I was 15 years old and I wasn't a very good driver, I suddenly was terrified of everyone that was driving a car. As a passenger, I was suddenly terrified of my dad driving me to the store. I'd be like, watch out for that, watch out for that. Why was I doing that? Well, it's because I felt like I was a terrible driver and I was projecting that onto my dad. And I was thinking, now he's a terrible driver. I'm afraid of the road and I'm not good. I'm not safe on the road. 
and therefore no one is safe on the road. But before that, I didn't have that self-esteem problem of driving. I just, I didn't think of driving at all. I just didn't ever think about it. And so I just figured that everyone else was good at it. So when we are afraid of something in ourselves and we're beating ourselves up for it or it's causing some kind of stress for us, we, one of the options available to us to cope with that is to project it onto someone else and attack that. I mean, remember, that's how this whole thing started. When we were on the phone a couple weeks ago and you said, if I could change anything about our relationship... I'll get rid of the phone. Well, what else did you say? You wished that you would have never been texting women. That was like, what, four years or three years ago? Ryan, you were texting a girl saying, hey, let's go to Cancun. That's what It is totally normal that after infidelity of whatever level that a couple goes through a period of recovery. It takes a long time to recover from infidelity, sometimes months, years, decades, as I've been talking about. And that's what they're trying to do at this moment. She is trying to get trust back for him. She wants to trust him, and she also wants to bring up things that happened in the past because she still has feelings about it, which is normal. And he doesn't want to bring up the past. We've already been over this. This is a universal conversation in infidelity recovery. And as a therapist, what I say to each individual, among many things that I do with them, is I say to him, how are you feeling? And he's like, well, I'm frustrated because we've already been over this. And then I say, it's normal that she's having these feelings. When infidelity happens, the, the waves of emotion, they come and they go. And when they come then the two of you have to attend to that and do it right, and then it'll go away. But it'll come back, and you attend to it, and it'll go. It'll feel like she is bringing up things just arbitrarily because she wants to punish you. No. When we're cheated on, we have waves of emotion that happen. We get triggered, and we have emotion, and, and as a couple, you have to attend to it. And I know that that is frustrating to you. I know that you wish you could put it behind you. I know that you've apologized. I know you've addressed this already. But you're going to do it many more times. That's just how this works. That's science because we've observed many other couples as they go through this. So when I talk to Ryan's of the world, it might take them a while to adjust, but eventually they're like, oh, I didn't know that. I didn't know that that's what infidelity recovery looks like because no one knows what infidelity recovery looks like because no one bothers to go to couples therapy. <laughs> now, what I would tell the Stephanie's of the world is I would say, you're having a, a trigger right now. He didn't have sex with you, and that triggered your worries that he's cheating on you. That's okay, and you have some feelings. Let's look at those feelings. What are those feelings? What was the trigger? Instead of laying into him and starting to lecture him in this top-down mother-son dynamic, how about you just sit with your feelings and express them vulnerably? So we would get to a place where she would say, okay, honey, I'm being triggered. You didn't have sex with me last night, which triggers me. It's, it's okay that you didn't have sex with me, but I just have to say my past traumas about being cheated on, not only by you, but by other people in my life, are, are being triggered by that. It's not your fault. It has, it has nothing to do with what happened. I just want to tell you that. I'm not accusing you of anything, but I'm having, you know, as our couples therapist talks about, I'm having one of those triggered moments. I'm having one of those waves of emotion. So what I really need from you right now is for you to reassure me that you love me and that I can trust you because that's the core of the issue. Can you just hug me or tell me that you love me or reassure me that you're not cheating on me? And if they can both do that, then they can get through that wave. And every time you do that, trust is built up and intimacy and connection is strengthened and the risk of infidelity actually goes down. To do it this way actually raises the risk of infidelity because it causes rifts and it causes anger and resentment and distance. So what they're doing right now is universal, but what they need is someone to help them go through it. Through your phone and I told you I was gonna call security if you didn't get the out. And I said, though, this time I'm done, I'm done. I mean, I can only handle so much, Ryan. And you know when I met your cousin Harris, he was so nice to me all the time, telling me how beautiful I was and just giving me all these compliments. And he called me every day. I mean, even right in front of you, Harris is very bold, and you know that. And all right. So this is another interesting interaction here. So 
They're talking about a past big conflict that the two of them went through in which she thought that he was cheating on her and he, she threw his phone or one of them threw a phone. And now I think she's building up to saying that she had sex with his cousin. And again, no eye contact from him. So it's just, and she is crying. So what's going on in her mind right now? I'm guessing she's worried she's gonna get rejected and she's about to reveal what happened and she wants to show him that she is remorseful, I think. So I said, I just threw Ryan out. I, I, I've had it this time. And he said, can I come see you? Cause I was crying so hard. I mean, it's been so long since you've made me feel special, you know? So I had him come and he spent the night with me that night. <sighs> so her demeanor is interesting. I, I don't obviously know her, but there's something a little, I don't know what to say, I don't know what word, I don't know what adjective to put. I'm trying to figure out where she's coming from at this point. Is she saying to him, I want to tell you how hurt I was in the moment so that when I tell you that I had sex with him, that you will not be upset at me and you won't reject me. That would be my guess. That Yeah, that seems like a good sort of assumption about what she's going through. She's thinking, oh crap, I'm about to tell him. And if I just tell him, it'll mean one thing. But if I tell him and really pour it on in terms of like what state I was in at the time, what how much pain I was in at the time, it will not excuse it, but it'll give it context. That's what I'm guessing she's trying to do here. I don't know if it's working on him though. Are you joking? I mean, are you kidding me right now? <laughs> I just admitted to you. You knew. I think Harris is that ass. Well, okay. So I guess that's a good sign. If we're hoping that the two of them can find balance and love, is that what we're hoping for? <laughs> I don't know what the audience is hoping for, but if we're hoping for harmony and love, don't we all hope for harmony and love? What's, what's so funny about love, peace, and understanding? So if that's what we're interested in, then it's a good sign that he already knew and he basically forgave her without asking for an apology. So that means that he is resilient under that information or he doesn't care about her anyway and so it didn't really phase him that much. You know, there's, that's one of the questions that this show just naturally asks, which is, does the individual, Ryan, does Ryan actually love her genuinely and want her in the way that we would think that romantic partners do, at least in our culture, or does he just want to get to the States, which he has stated. He phrases things, you know, last episode, he was phrasing things like, you know, I'm gonna get to the United States, I'm gonna get to America no matter what. And maybe he's like, well, yeah, my cousin had sex with her, but I don't really care that much because I don't really like her that much to begin with. She's just a means to an end. I hate thinking that about people and it is potentially racist and xenophobic to even bring that up. But I think that this couple does raise that question the way that they have presented themselves to the camera and the way that the producers have edited it for us. That's how we always have to say that. Like, who knows? Maybe there's tons of footage of him being uh, completely different and they just edit that out because they want us to hate him. There's just no way of knowing. Um, of course, they could saw someone else going in the room, which is not me. That was one of my biggest mistakes to introduce you to him. He's a backstabber, you know? Well, I, don't, I don't classify him as a family anymore. But, I mean, Harris wouldn't have been a, a problem if, if you wouldn't have, you know, stepped out on me and asking other ladies to go to Cancun. All right. So she is... So that's interesting. You would think she would say, oh, well, so do you forgive me? 
because that's how I was building up to this was I was going to apologize. So are you okay with that? But then she takes a left turn now, and now it's about her being hurt from that time, which is okay for her to have those feelings, but I wish they would take one topic at a time. But okay, now she's shifting gears to revisiting, okay, the reason why that happened was because you really hurt me. Let's see if they can recover from that incident as well, which would be her expressing her feelings, him saying, I'm sorry that I did that to you. Here's why. I can see what that would hurt you. Let's see what they do. I mean, I had no idea that you love to flirt. You probably caught me a couple of times texting people. It's no biggie. It know? is a biggie when I thought that you and I were like in a relationship. Really pissed off and you took it to another limit, which, well, yeah. I, ne which I never did. I will never take it that far. I mainly blame her for entertaining him, but I blame both of them. A long time ago. I'm still here with you, you know? Okay, so... <laughs> on the scale of things, it could have been a lot worse. There could have been a lot of throwing of things and yelling and insulting each other, so we don't see that. It's always good to look at the glass half full part of this. But the glass half empty part of this is what is the landscape here? Do they, what's being communicated? Is he trying to say, maybe, maybe he's trying to say, this doesn't bother me. I'm, I'm a man and the fact that you cheated on me, you know, I'm above emotions and you can't hurt me. Is that his attitude or is he literally not hurt? Because if you were in this position even if you had known about it the whole time, feelings would come up. You'd be hurt. It would hurt you. You'd be like, yeah, you lied to me and you've lied to me this whole time. It hurts. It hurts that you did that. So either he's hurt and he is covering it up or he isn't hurt. And there's other reasons why he wouldn't be hurt. You know, if you're not hurt, it could be like he doesn't care that much about her or he's like he just moves on really fast from things or he's just not that type of jealous guy. There's just a lot of questions. I forgive you. Straight up, I'm over it up. You forgive me, but you yeah, don't I forgive, forgive you, but I'll never forgive you. You're my woman. I love you and I forgive you. Okay. Uh, the way they talk is interesting and hard to read, but if we take the verbatim, that's great that he is saying, I forgive you and I love you. I mean, we would like other couples to have that attitude and be resilient like that too. So if, if we're just gonna take this little snippet, but in the context of the broader relationship, it's hard to know what is happening right here. That this, fan, this couple just seems to have a lot of different things that I'm still getting used to watching. He's nobody to me. He's dead to me, okay, honey? And I mean that, and I'll take that to the grave with me. You know, in some ways, I'm glad that he's acting like he's forgiving me, but you know, he's kind of holding back. There's something there, like he still is really mad and he just doesn't want to let it all out. So I don't know if my confession is the beginning of us healing or this could be the end of our relationship. I know I always say this, but if you want to become a patron of the podcast, you can do so. That's how we know you like what we're doing. You can go to patreon.com and become a patron of Psychology in Seattle. You basically sign up there, and when we put out things that are exclusive to patrons, which is actually frequent, then you get access up, like, arguably our best episodes in the podcast are only available to patrons. So go to patreon.com, become a patron of the podcast if you want. And everyone out there, please take care of yourself because you deserve it. You really, really do.